God has been so good. Early this Sunday morning, he reached down and touched us. And so I'm so grateful. It's good to see all of your faces. Gracious Father, we're so grateful to be here. We come to worship and praise your holy and righteous name. We can't live, we can't walk, we can't breathe. We can do nothing without you. So we welcome you in our service this morning. Do what you do, Father. Do what you do. We know that if you do what you do, you're going to give us what we need. You're going to strengthen us where we're weak. You're going to build us up where we're torn down. And we say thank you. Let's go and pray. Loving Father, we come before thee with thanksgiving in our hearts, thanking you for everything that you've done. You've allowed us to gather here this morning, Father. We come with praise and thanksgiving on our hearts, thanking you for everything that you've done, everything that you're doing and everything that you're going to do. So bless this service, Father. Bless the soul that's going to stand up on the wall to the proclaim your word, Father. It won't be her, but it'll be you speaking through her. Tune our hearts and our ears, Father, so that we can hear that we can understand, Father, and apply the words to our lives. Bless those that will listen over the phone line. Bless those that will listen via your technology, Father. We say thank you. Thank you. Now bless as only as you can, Father. Press out even forever. Amen. We're going to ask you to give the Lord a big round of applause as this male chorus come and, and give us our opening hymn for this morning. Amen. Amen. been so good. Lord, I know you've been so good. You washed over me all night long. Lord, I know you've been so good. Lord, I know you've been so good. Lord, I know you've been so good. You washed over me all night Jesus, I've been wrong in my life, and sometimes I even sin. But Lord, I want to thank you this morning for letting me kneel down and pray again. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but you made old death behave and made it get back. You've been good. You've been good. Thank you, Lord. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. Oh, I thank you. You've been good. I know you've been, been so good to me. Lord, I know you spared my life. Lord, I know you spared my life. You 
watched over me all night long. Lord, I know you spared my life. Jesus, you been my mother and you been my father too. Yeah. Out of all the troubles I had in my life, without you I don't know what I would do. That's why I keep my hand in the wine and chain. Oh, every day of my life I'm trusting in your name. You've been good. 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 Oh, I thank you. You've been good. 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 Early this morning. You touched my body. You've been good. And I woke right on up. You've been good. You've been good. I got my legs, you and I can walk. You good. Somebody got legs, you but it can't walk. You I got eyes, you good. and I can see. You good. Somebody got eyes this you morning, good. but it can't see. You I got my health, you good. I got my strength. You good. Lord, I thank you. You've been, been so good. You, been good. you touched my body, you and I can move. You touch my body, and I can move. You touch my body, and I can move. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. Early this morning, you touch my body, and I can see. Lord, I thank you. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. I know you've been so good to me. The Lord has been so good to you. Yeah. If you agree with that, give the Lord a big round of applause. Early this morning, Father, you touched my body, started me on my way. You've been good, Father. When it looked like things wouldn't work out because I depended on me. I depended on my strength. But once I started depending on God, it's amazing what happened. Today our scripture is going to come from the book of Psalms, the 37th chapter, verses 4 and 5. The book of Psalms, the 37th chapter, verses 4 and 5. I'm reading the King James Version. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Amen? Amen. 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 It's amazing. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee that desire of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall. He shall. He shall bring it to pass. O oh, loving Father. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for bringing us back to your house, Father, your house of prayer. Yes, thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to gather once again. Thank you, Father. Our desire is to be your people, Father.
So we say thank you for leading us and guiding us. Thank you for giving us the desire to read your word. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit to open up our minds, Father. Thank you for touching our ears so that we hear your still voice. Thank you for keeping our family safe, Father. So much is going on. So much is going on, Father. We can become so distracted, so easy. But thank you for getting our attention, Father. You've placed the sun, Father, so that every 24 hours it comes up and we see it, Father. And during the nighttime, Father, you place your moon. So we say thank you. Early this morning, Father, I was able to look out and see a bright moon, Father. In your stars there, you are God. So we say thank you. Sometimes, Father, we Allow situations to get on our mind, Father. And instead of giving it to you, we try to solve it ourselves. So forgive us, Father. We know to give it to you. And once we give it to you, Father, we know we don't have to worry about it. Well, I thank you for all the moments we have together, Father. I thank you. You know us, Father. You know our going, our coming. You know what? On our minds, Father. Your word said if we commit our ways to you, Father. If we delight ourselves, Father. Thank you. All the families, Father, that are dealing with the loss of their loved ones. wars and rumors of wars, Father. Because man wants power. Well, you have all power. You have all authority, Father. Help us to love each other. Help us to accept each other, Father, for the way that you made us. So I thank you. Bless everyone under the sign of my voice, Father. Bless their families. Bless their homes. We know that you supply all our needs, Father. So we thank you. And those that are on the sick list, Father, touch their bodies. As long as you can. in their brokenness, Father. We thank you. Now bless the service. Make it what you want it to be, Father. Bless you. Preach your Father. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Speak through her, Father. Give her the word that your people need. 
give it clarity. Then help us to receive you, Father. We love you. We thank you. These are all blessings we ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. I say it forever. Amen. to his name. God is good, amen. Y'all act like y'all tired this morning. Y'all act like y'all partied all last night. Y'all partied sometime during the week. What's the matter? You been out there partying, you can't come in here and party? It need to be a Holy Ghost party going on up in him. Come on, give God glory. Stand to your feet. Everyone that is able to stand, stand to your feet. And give God praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise in the house this morning. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Render up a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 He's good. Give him a hallelujah praise again. Not because I said so. Because hallelujah is the highest praise. Amen. It is the highest praise. Brit, Brit. Glory to God. God is good. Amen. I love the Lord. Do you love him this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all can have your seat. I just want you to get up and just give God praise in the house. That was an awesome prayer, Deacon Is it prayed, amen? Awesome prayer, amen? Anointed, glory to God. So we're going to do the welcome. If there's anyone visiting for the first time in Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church, the house of God, where real love resides, with the people of God, is there any new visitors? Is there any newcomers? Is anyone visiting for the first time? For the second time, for the third time, we want to welcome you anyway. We want to welcome those that are watching online. We want to welcome those that are listening via through the conference call line. Welcome. And I want to welcome the people that are already established in the house of God. Welcome this morning. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We're about to do our announcements this morning. Just know that there is no volume for the announcements, but they are going to, you're going to be able to see it, and then they're going to tweak it, and they're going to send it out to later on today. Amen? All right. God bless.
Hallelujah. Give him praise. Praise him. Those are the announcements. Govern yourselves accordingly. As you well know, it is customary to bless the offerings and the tithes that have been brought to this house. Amen. If everyone would stand to their feet, we're going to lift up our first fruits unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father God, we bless you this morning. Father, we lift up our offerings before you, O oh God, and ask that you would bless it. For you said to bring all you the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And God, you said that we can ask you to prove yourself to us, Father. So God, as we bring our blessings and our offerings to you, God, prove yourself to us, O oh Father. God, you said, will a man rob God? You said, yes, God, in tithes and in offerings. You said, God, to bring in the blessings, O oh God, and you, God, will send out the blessings. Father, so we lift these offerings before you. We ask, God, that you bless it, God, for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We ask, God, that you bless every hand, oh, Father God, that have prepared and have brought your blessings. Bless those, God, that did not have to bring at this time. We thank you, Lord God, for how we're going, you're going to use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Selection, and then the next voice, y'all in here will be God. Amen. 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 Jesus cares when I'm burdened. He cares when I'm all alone, and he cares when I'm in misery. Oh, he cares, cares for me, and he cares when I'm in scary. He concerned so earnestly. Yes, I know, I know Jesus cares. He cares for me. Oh, yes, he does. Jesus cares when I'm in sorrow and my pain is so hard to bear and he cares about my situation good to know he's always there when my day is dark as night he'll be there to make it all right I'm glad to know Jesus cares for me, oh, I know, I know he cares. that he cares, I know he cares. For, me. for me, yes, he does, for me. that I know, I know he cares. Jesus cares, I know he cares. For, me. For, me. for me, oh, yes, he does, for me. sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down, almost level to the ground. But I know that he cares for me. Oh, I know that he cares for me. Thank you, Jesus. Said I know Jesus cares for me. Oh, yes, he does. But my friends don't understand. After I've done the best I can, but I know Jesus cares for me. Jesus cares when I'm in sorrow and my pain is so hard to bear. And he cares about my situation. So good to know he's always there. When my day is dark as night, he'll be there to make it all right. I'm glad to know that Jesus cares for me. Oh, I know that he cares for me. Thank you, Jesus, that I know Jesus cares. For me. for me, oh yes he does, 
When I'm down to my last time, he'll step in right on time. Cause I know that he cares. I know that he cares. I'm not worried about one thing. Because I know he holds my hand. I know. He cares. I know. Yes, I know. I know he cares. I know that he cares. I'm not worried about one thing. Because I know he holds my hand. I know. Yes, I know. I know. Yes, I know. I know that he cares for me. my last dime, he'll step in right on time, because I know that he cares, I know that he cares, I know that he cares for me. Hallelujah. Do you know that he cares this morning? Do you know that he cares this morning? Amen. I know he cares. Amen. To God be the glory. He cares for you. He cares for you. He cares for you. And he cares for me. Amen. He has no respecter of persons. And I bless him. He's got enough love for everybody. I always say he has much and he has many. He has much love and he has many blessings. Amen. To God be the glory. I give our God glory this morning. I thank him for another opportunity to stand before such great people as yourself. I bless him. Amen. I bless the Lord for our pastor and first lady in their absence this morning. I bless him for the associate ministers, the deacons, the leaders. I bless him for the ushers, the musicians, the choir. I bless him for everyone that are in their proper places this morning. And I bless him for you. Amen. Because without you, there would not be no us. Without you, there would not be a here. Amen. Glory to God. And I thank God for your faithfulness. And he's going to reward you diligently. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. And I bless him. I don't know how God is going to do this word. So I'm just going to ask that you guys be much in prayer with me as I am in prayer for myself as well. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, once again, we come before you. If y'all would stand to your feet, we give you praise and honor and glory. Father God, as humble as I know how, I pray, God, that you decrease me, Freya, Al Freya, that you may step in, that, God, that you may say what you want to say, and, God, that I'm smart enough and humble enough to surrender to let you do just what you want to do. Have your way this morning, God. And let your people hear what you have to say. God, not with their mind, not with their flesh, but, Father, with their heart and with the Spirit of God. Let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I do want to come to you from... Psalm 37, 4, and 5, which has already been read. But I want to look at, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. That's what I want to look at this morning. My topic this morning is surrendering to God. Amen. There is a song that goes, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. 
all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. Make me, Savior, wholly thine. Let me feel thy Holy Spirit, truly knowing that thou art mine. Amen. I surrender all. I surrender all. We understand the delicate balances between making plans and the surrendering to the divine will of God. Surrendering to God doesn't mean relinquishing your desires or giving up on setting goals. Rather, it is about finding a harmonious partnership with the divine guidance that unfolds within us. To surrender to God and letting go begins with developing a relationship of trust, faith, and faith with the Lord. Do you have that this morning? Do you trust the Lord today? Are you walking in faith with God today? Are you walking harmoniously with the Lord this morning? If you are, say amen. Recognizing that there is a greater intelligence at play, one that has a grander perspective and know what is best for us and our good. Amen. I give him glory this morning. I would tell my children, my sons, adult children, what to do. The Lord moved me up here in 2010, and I would say this, and I would say that to them. Until one day, I was captured by the Holy Spirit, the God that I know that lives in me. And he said to me, you don't know what's best for them, for you, let alone what's best for them. He said, stop saying these. I would say certain things because you have to realize that what we speak, it manifests. Amen. So if you're not speaking good things, then you're speaking the negative things. You're not speaking the so true things. And if you're not speaking the will of God, it manifests. Amen. So this morning, God is saying surrendering involves releasing the need to control every aspect of our lives and allowing ourselves to be guided with the divine wisdom of an almighty God. Can you do that this morning? Surrendering to God is one of the biggest problems that we as human beings can do. We do not know how to let go of our will and allow God's will to be done. God is saying this morning that if you will continue to press, amen, say press, press into the things of him, which means press by fasting, press by reading your word, press by continuously asking him to deliver you from those things that are hidden. Those secret thoughts and hidden sins that you think nobody know about. Those hidden things that you think that nobody can touch. But God says, I'm God. He says that I am all knowing, I'm all powerful, and I'm all seeing. He said, lest you forget I knew you before you were conceived in your mother's womb. He said, lest you forget. He said, I created the world with you in mind. God is saying this morning, he said, when you begin to relinquish your will to him, he said, then I can fall and rain down on you. Um, he said, it's not manna. He said, it's bread. Um, he said, the bread of the true living God. He said, I'll rain down on you. I am all see God. Um, glory to God. He said, one of the biggest problems with man is we don't like to surrender. We do not like to let someone be in control. Um, but God wants us to know, he said, I'm not just someone. Um, he said, I God. I am the true and living God. He said, no man can come to me except through by my son, Jesus. He said, but when you begin to allow me to come in and arrest myself in you, he said, then I can begin to do great and mighty things. See God. He said, surrendering means letting go of those things that you don't want nobody to know. You know, that little, that little dark secret that you've been holding on to. Um, you know, that little wicked thing that you like doing every now and again um, that you think nobody know about. Um, God said that thing right there. Um, he said, but not only just that. He said, there is still a part of you that you're holding back from me. He said, there's a part of you that you won't let go that I can come in. He said, I want to put an arresting in your spirit. And in order for me to do that, you have to surrender. Say surrender. Say, I surrender all. 
I surrender all. I surrender all. God lives in us because we've allowed him to come in by way of the Holy Spirit. God says, I'm a gentleman. I'm not going to force myself on my people. He said, but if you want me to come and sup with you as I want to, you have to let go and let God. When our plans align with God's plan, that's when the magic begins to happen. When our will becomes subjective to God's will, that's when the Holy Spirit can come in. When our desire begins to fall by the wayside, then God says that I can pick you up and put you on a solid rock. God says when we continue to allow ourselves to be moved by the things of this world and the issues of life, we hinder the blessings of an overflow. We don't allow the Holy Spirit to come in like it wants to. And God is saying this morning that when you begin to allow me to come in, he said, I can do great and mighty things within you, within your spirit, man, within your mental capacity. He said, within your jobs and your homes, uh, within your children. Uh, he said, within your finances, I can begin to come in and do great things within you. Amen? Surrendering all. It feels like we are fl flowing effortlessly, effortlessly throughout life's journey. And things start to manifest easily when we surrender to God. Instead of swimming against the current, we are going to start flowing with life. Our submission is to understand where we fall in line. In our spiritual walk with God and reading his word, we will come to realize what it really means to surrender all. Surrendering to God is to understand what is best for us is him. Surrendering to God is understanding that he knows what is best for us. However, it is extremely difficult to let go of our desires and our plans and our purposes in life for ourselves. You see, we've already mapped it out. People have already said, did you make that five-year plan? You know, you got to have that guideline to go by. How's that working for you? How did that work for you? See, it doesn't work for me. Because, see, I am in the divine will. At least I want to be deacon in the divine will of God. And if I have my own plans in line with what man think I should do, uh, if I have my own plans based off of they saying you need a five-year plan in order for you to make it from A to B, uh, then I fall short of that. But when I begin to allow my plans to line up with what God's will is for me, uh, then I know that I'm in right standing with God. Uh, because God said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Um, I'll be with you even to the end of time. Um, he said, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, um, I will be with you always. Um, he told me that greater is he um, that is within me than he that is in the world. Um, and the plans and the purposes he got for my life um, is yea and amen. Um, God is not a man that he shall lie, um, nor the son of God that he shall repent. Um, his plans is true and yes, um, they will come to pass. Um, but only if you surrender to God. Only if you surrender to God. Only if we surrender to an almighty God. God knows what's best. Life has a way of throwing us a curve sometimes. Um, but you got to know how to duck and dodge um, those curves. Um, you got to know how to throw a jump and jab those curves. Um, you got to know from which you where your help coming from. Uh, my help comes from the Lord. I know how to truck and jab uh, when it comes to God's word. Um, I can't do it in the natural, uh, but I know how to do it in the spirit. I know how to bow down. I know how to lay prostrate. Uh, I know how to turn my plate over. I know how to fast and seek his face. I'm talking about fasting. Do you know how to fast? Do you know how to give it to the Lord? The song says, all to Jesus. All to Jesus. All to Jesus. Not some, not partial. He said, but all to Jesus, I surrender. You got to know that you got to have an I mentality. And if you're not surrendering to God, then you're surrendering to something else other than who he is. 
choose this day who you're going to serve. You're either going to serve and trust God or you're going to serve and trust man. Man does not have a heaven to put you in, but he surely know how to help you to get to hell. <laughs> the life that I wanted, me, versus the life that God chose for me was something totally different. Again, I say I tried the five-year plan, me. It didn't work for me. I have a grown son, and he used to say, Mom, what are your plans? Mom, what are you going to do? Mom, do your mom. And I would look at him, and I'm like, with God, all things are possible. I'm like, we can't keep talking like this. But you got to understand something. Even though we raise our children in the church, they're not going to always think like we think. They're not going to always see it the way we see it. So, therefore, they're not going to adjust, adjust to what we want. Amen. And that's thinking outside of the box of what they know. When you have made up in your mind to surrender to God, everything in life does come a little bit more easy to you. It really does. You don't worry as much. You don't worry as much about your children. You don't worry as much about your finances. You don't worry as much about how you're going to eat and put food on the table. When you are in a place with God and you're surrendering with God, Deacon Bo, everything else and nothing else matters. Because God is at the forefront and at the realm of your life. Why? Because you've taken the back seat and you have put him in the front seat. And you say, God, you drive, I'll follow. God, you drive. I'll sit back here and just ride alone. I don't mind if I do. God, you drive. And I'll let you have the right of way. Because I don't want to be in the way. Amen. God's got plans for us. There are going to be struggles in letting go and letting God, surrendering to God. But it is always in our best interest if we do. Things are not always going to work out the way we want them to. The more we try to force things into a direction to fit our plans, the more we suffer. Does anyone suffer? When you think you got it all together, when you think that you're doing the right thing and all of a sudden there's a curveball again and you have to duck and you got to try to back it up a little bit. You got to realize that it's not lining up. So I am here to tell you there are sure some times that we are always going to be aware that we're going against God's plan and God's will. But we refuse to surrender to God. Our stubbornness gets the best of us, even though we are aware that we're refusing to surrender. We keep resisting the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit. Do you feel it? It's tangible. A lot of people feel like it doesn't exist because they can't see it. And so they go against the grain of what they cannot see. And sometimes you're not going to feel the Holy Spirit, but you still got to go in your knowing. This is a part of surrendering to God. Because God says the footsteps of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. And when you're surrendering your will to God, he's going to always order your footsteps. He's going to always lead and guide us. He's always going to be at the forefront of our mind. God has great plans in store for us. We keep refusing in the Holy Spirit, leading and guiding us. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. We quote that scripture, but some of us don't know what it really means. There's depth to God's word. There's meaning to his word. And there is a spirit to his word. God is saying in this word, I know you. I need you. I think highly of you. I think good thoughts towards you. I think of you, and I think of the blessings that I want to give you. But however, there is a block. There's a wall. There's a stillness. And he can't get past it. He's not to go over it. And he's not going to go around it. And it's yes. It's us. 
He said, I cannot, I will not move beyond what you allow me to move. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work that way. He said, why? Because I see beyond what you're allowing me to see. I'm God. I see everything. I know the very intricate parts of you that you don't even know about yourself. And he said, until you move out of the way, I can't get in the way. Until, it's not a sidestep. It's not a back step. It's completely out of the way. I am oblivious to what I am doing, God. But by faith, I'm going to let you have your way. By faith, I'm asking this mountain to be moved, and I don't see it anymore. But I know it's there. But God, by faith, because I surrendered, I am no longer operating in my own. I'm no longer doing anything on my own. And God said in Jeremiah 29 and 11, for he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us. Thoughts for our good. He has good for us. He wants good for us. But until we line it up and get it right, good is not coming. Good can be there all day long staring us in the face. But if we're not surrendering to an almighty God, and I mean surrender until you feel weak, weak in the knees. God now is not just talking about now, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. He said that's for his babies. That ain't for us. He said we grown people. We not on milk. We on meat. You eating steak. You eating short ribs. You eating chicken. You eating green beans. You eating all that good old comfort food. God said that's what this is about. He said if you want to be an adult, I'm going to treat you like one. If you want to act like a baby, I'm going to treat you like a baby. If you want to act like an infinite, you suck this bottle. But God says, I got good in store for you. Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? I got good in store for my people. But he said, I'm not going to give you nothing. He said, until you do right by me, you got to do right by God. You got to do right by an almighty God because he's going to be God all day long whether you want to do it or not. He's going to bless who he want to bless whether you want him to bless him or not. You can get yours. You can get yours. And if you don't get yours, I'm going to do my best to get mine. He says, so what are you? Are you an adult? Are you a child, a toddler, or are you an infant? God saying, whatever stage you're in in this season, that's what he's going to treat you like. Until you surrender and do it God's way, until you decide to move out of God's business, until you decide to stop sidestepping him, until you decide to start move stepping up to the plate him, and doing what God told you to do, him, he said, I'm going to treat you like, I, like you are in the place that you're in. And he said, it's going to be uncomfortable. You're not going to like it. But until you do what God says you tell you to do and do it the way he told you to do it, you're going to stay in the place you're in. That's what God's saying this morning. I'm just the messenger. He said, surrender unto me. He said, because my people are dying and more are dying on account of us because we're not in line. We hear the word, but we're not doers of the word. We are walking in the form of godliness and denying the power thereof. Uh, he said we're walking like we know it and talking like we know it, but we're not acting like we know it. He said because you're acting like you done lost your mind. You're acting like you've never been introduced to me. You're acting like you're not saved. You're acting like you don't know the Holy Ghost. You're acting like you hadn't been delivered. You're acting like you're not free. You're acting just like you did when you were in the world. And I told you to be in the world, but not of the world. He said, there's a divining difference. There's a difference. Being in the world means living and walling in sin. Being of the world is that you're about your father's business. It's a big difference. You're on your jobs every day. You're of the world. Are you spreading the good news? Are you telling people about we had this discussion in Sunday school? 
We can always talk about God without mentioning God, but knowing that it is God. Everything is done in decency and in order. And God says, again, I have no respect to a person. People are dying. People are hurting right there beside you, right there in front of you, right there in the next aisle from you. And we're doing nothing. And we recognize it. And we won't move. We won't say anything. And we sit down on the Holy Ghost. We sitting down on the Holy Ghost. Therefore, we sitting down on God. And he said, you got to know him for yourself. And if you know him, I'm like, really, for real, all jokes aside, I'm talking like, really, know God? It's a difference from knowing him and knowing of him and knowing about him. Do you know him this morning? <laughs> it's about a relationship. When you know God, you don't feel yourself. But when you know God, he said, there ain't nothing about you when you know him. When you know God, I tell people, God has moved me around like a church mouse. He's taken me from here to there. And people have said to me, my family, they don't understand to a certain point, but they do. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. I don't know where God is going to take me from one moment to the next, but I'm available. I'm available. And being available means it's going to hurt. Being available means that, God, even though I don't know it, even though I can't see it, even though it don't smell right, I'm available. And it's a difference. <laughs> it's a difference. Surrendering to God means, and it's hard, I'm going to say this because this is what's in my, it's hard for black people. Not taking it out of context because God says we're all one. But we're strong people. God made us individually strong. We like the Israelites. We strong. We solidified. We got to remember something. The earth, the world was built off of our backs, our ancestors. How they prayed in slavery. How they made up those old hymnals in slavery. How I know my great grandmother. History is built off the back of our ancestors. And they know what it's like to surrender and be in slavery and bondage. They know what it's like to be hungry. They know how it is like to be whipped for food. They know what it's like for their women and daughters to be raped. They know what it's like for their children and families to be taken from them. We have not yet to begin experience any of that with our families to a point, but it's happening today still. Surrendering to God meaning. That regardless of what's going on around us, we're focused. We're focused. I can't do nothing about a situation if I'm looking at it and I'm fighting with it in the natural. I'm doing the neck roll. I'm doing the lip smacking. I'm doing the popping. I cannot do a thing with it. But if I can get on my knees. If I can get in my closet, if I can get to God in prayer, and I could stand right there and pray to God in front of you, I don't really have to wait till I get home because why? It's an urgency. I have an urgency within my soul. I have an urgency within my spirit. Don't let the world, the people in the world outdo us as Christians, as saints, because people that are not saved, they're doing the work of God, and we're not. You think about it, it's visual. See it, it's happening. Don't let them outdo us. Why? Because a lot of them don't have the word in them. We do. And we ain't doing nothing. Not one single iota of nothingness. Surrendering to God. I told you I don't know where God's going with this message this morning, but I do want to say I have not slept all night. 
because God has been ministering his word to me, not just last night, but for days and weeks. And I have been surrendering everything in me that's not like you. Every part of me that's not like you. Every thought I think that's not of your thought. Every will I got that's not lining up with the will of God. Every step that I take that is not conducive to where you will have me to go. Every spirit that I'm picking up that is not part of the Holy Spirit. Everything that I hear that is not for my ears to hear. Deliver me. So I can be where I need to be. And to do what I need to do. And say what I need to say. And not try to give anybody with itching ears anything that is not needful for them to hear. Because they are held accountable at my hand. I don't want, I am not a word speaking person and talk it. I do my best to live it. And I'm going to tell you why. I have two grown sons and they don't mind calling their mama out. Well, mama, how are you going to? And my grandchildren, grandma, you, I'm going to walk it and then I'm going to talk it. They're going to see it and they're going to believe whether they follow it, it's up to them. But I'm going to do my best to live it. And I'm trying to live it out loud. That's part of surrendering. That's part of letting go. You got to understand something. We too fleshy. And when you are fleshy, it's impossible to please God. Because flesh get in the way. Flesh and spirit, there's a war going on. And God ain't going to be, he ain't, he's not a part of that. He's not a part of that. He's not going to be in all that. There are some steps that God has given me on how to surrender to God. And I'm going to be done. Y'all going to wait till the Holy Ghost gets through this morning. Because God ain't done until he says he's done. There are seven things. One is surrendering to God through prayer. To re- surrender to God and letting go, we need the, sh- the strength and guidance, and it is not always good to understand God's plans for us. Through prayer, we can ask for strength to overcome our own desires and attachments and beliefs, which no longer serve serve us or God. We can also pray for guidance and clarity when our minds feel clouded during life's challenging times. Be mindful of our thoughts. God just said all that. Most often, our minds are clouded with worries, doubts, and fears, which make us feel like we are lost in our own darkness. Our fears and worries make it harder to surrender to God as we stay stuck in our comfort zone. Therefore, we cannot be used. Therefore, God cannot utilize us. Therefore, we are in a place of what? Stillness. And nobody's being blessed. Nobody. Not even us. Amen? Instead of choosing the path of personal and spiritual growth, like every other discipline in our lives, We must practice mindfulness and learn how to become aware of our negative thoughts. Three, having faith and trust in God completely. To surrender to God completely, it usually takes some risk and requires us to step out of our comfort zone. With much sacrifice comes great rewards. We must give up something to get something. Look at Genesis 22, 1 through 13, when God told Abraham to leave home. Abraham was rich. Abraham, Abraham probably was thinking, man, you done lost your mind. He took his son. He took his wife. He took his cattle. He took everything he had, and he left. Obedience to God. But also because he surrendered, there was a blessing. There was a blessing. Do we not know that when we surrender into God, the blessings and the benefits that we bestow that we can have. Because there's a blessing not just in obedience, but just surrendering. We're lighter. We're freer. We're not heavy. We're not heady. Our thoughts, we can think clearly. We can walk with a new walk. We got a new thing going on with us. And people notice it, but they can't recognize it. Does that make sense? 
Letting go of the need to control. Letting go of the need to control is one of the hardest things we can do. We do not like to feel vulnerable. We don't like to feel like we've given up a part of ourselves. Because to us, as a black race, we feel like that's a sign of weakness. It really does. And we're not trying to be weak. We like the strength. But God says his strength is made perfect in our weakness. That's what the word says. I don't know about your word, but that's what mine says. We are, we are to understand the impression that if we control things, we avoid suffering and everything is going our way. But in reality, we cannot control what is outside of us and thus we create more suffering. We can only control how we react to things. How we think and how we feel. By strengthening our faith in God, we will find out that it is easier to let go and trust God completely. When we surrender to God and let go, we feel relieved and a sense of freedom, even though it sounds scary. It is extremely liberating as it frees our minds from negative thinking, doubts, and speculative fear. Fear is grappling and holds us in place. It keeps us still and not moving. Fear is an embodiment of something of the devil himself come to captivate you and to keep you from moving forward in the blessings of God that he has for you. Again, keep in mind the devil done peek into your future. He know what you got. He know what you're working with. Now what you do with it is up to you. He can't take it, but you can surely give it away. We got to fight for mine. I don't know about y'all. Spend time in the nature of God. Spending time outside with God sometimes helps us to connect with God. It can be extremely beneficial to go for a walk in the nature of God, especially after a long, hard day of work where you have encompassed yourself with a whole lot of spirits that ain't of God, including your own. Competitive walking, sitting down quietly outside, watching the sunset or sunrise has a calming effect on our entire being. Looking at all God's creation gives us a sense of who he is. Here's a friendly reminder to remind us. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Journal journey is number six. Sometimes we can feel like what is, you, what is the use and that all hope is gone. But at times I have learned that writing things down, I can give it all to God. I am surrendering it all to him on paper as well as in my thoughts, my vision, my heart, my soul, my spirit my mind, my very being. He can help it to all make sense to us. Make it plain for us that there is still hope yet, that he's still God. He's still in the blessing business, and he's still waiting on us. And that the promises of God are still yea and amen. To God be the glory. Last but not least, number seven, seek spiritual guidance. Seeking guidance from God and spiritual guidance for support will help Help from someone else throughout our life's journey and challenging situations can be a bit of a challenge within itself. A lot of times it is difficult to understand God's will. And we may never understand the will of God for our lives completely. Because if he tells us, we'll try to go and fix it. We'll try to make it happen and we'll mess it up. But always remember, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall will direct your path. Won't he do it? Will he do it? Did he do it? Can he do it? He'll do it every time. Also know that this is a trying of our faith and trusting in an almighty God, especially during times of uncertainty and or fear. Remember, fear is faith's worst enemy. There's no fear in God. There's nothing but faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. You think about those that were in the Bible. They seen their promises far off. They seen them, but they were not able to obtain them. Go read Hebrews. They seen them, and I tell God, God, I don't want to just see mine. I want to get it. I see that thing over there. Can I have that? Daddy, Abba, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. That's what he's saying. Thy will be done. God, I see that. You said, God, that I can have anything I want. I can have because I'm a child of God. You said I'm an heir. I'm an heir, a joint heir. I'm a child of the kingdom. I'm of a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. I am the apple of your eye. You said if I delight myself in you, then I can have anything that I ask for. You said if I delight myself in you, all I got to do is ask. You said if I pay my tithes and my offerings, that I can say, God, come before you. Prove me now, here which said the Lord of hosts, if I will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. Is that not what he is saying? But you got to surrender. We got to let go. We got to. That's the only way. There are benefits humbly surrendering to God. When we surrender to God and let go of our plans, we realize that that is the best. The ideas of our, our hearts and our heads and the things that we want, as well as false identities and attachments that lead us to chasing wrong goals and desires. It's a waste of time. And when you surrender to God and God begins, you begin to reflect on all that, you realize, what in the world was I thinking? When you begin to look at that joker and he done broke your heart, or you begin to look at that chick and she done left you, and then later on down the line, you look at you like, what was I thinking? I done bumped my head. We got to be careful. Surrender to God. He see the bigger, he, he sees the bigger picture. Ah, they fade away. They will diminish and not take root. We will always realize that with God, it is never too late. Our blessings may be a little, del may be a little delayed, but they're never denied. Don't forget Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah, when they, they wanted a kid, in their old age, God did it. He's God. Amen. We will have peace, peace knowing that all is well with God, then all is well with us. We will learn how to surrender and give and give and receive the five love languages of God, which are words of affirmation, quality of time, gifts, acts of service, which was Jesus' first love language, and physical touch. These are the five love languages of God. We will also keep in mind that we say prayer. Prayer is one of the first ones to surrender to God. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call to me and I will answer. I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that we do not know. If we call to him, he will answer us. He said, yet while we're speaking that he's already answered. He said, and I will tell you great things. I will tell you marvelous things and I will show you things. God reveals himself. His heart, his will, and our sin through prayer. God will tell us great things. Our faith will increase and we will believe God. And we will be counted to him as righteousness. Amen. But most of all, we will have a closer walk and relationship with God. How many of us want a closer walk with the Lord? Don't go to sleep on me yet. Don't get bored because I know it's good. It's food for our soul and marrow is for our bone. I told y'all I don't know where God is going to go with this word. I know it was for me because it was a changing experience in my heart. You can never surrender to God too much. Because he said to every level, every realm goes higher and higher. And there's a deeper walk with God. Just when you have mastered that one walk, there's another plateau we got to go to. Um, there's another extreme that we have to go to. Um, and in the event for us to get there, each time we have to surrender with each and every ounce of us. Uh, each time with every plateau and, and each level in the Holy Spirit and, and each place in God. Um, every time we surrender, we're in a new place. We're in a new season. We're in a new atmosphere. We begin to walk with God. He says that I withhold no good things from you. I withhold no good things from my people. I withhold no good things from you if you do it my way. I withhold no good things from you if you surrender. I withhold no good things from you if you stop walking in the flesh. I will withhold no good things from you if you start thinking out of the carnal. I will withhold no good things from you if you stop acting like it's out of yourself. I withhold no good things from you and order your footsteps in my word. God says, I've got great things in store. He just told us on Wednesday night he want to take us from rags to riches. And we think we've arrived. 
we have not even begun to tap into what God has for us. Not, no, no, not one small minute of anything. He's God. He's a great big God. And he's got the whole world in his hands. And he has plans for us. And he's still in the blessing business. Amen. That's the word. I know you guys are probably looking to shout, really give God glory. But God said this word is a conditioning word, a thoughtful word. And if you got it, good. If you didn't, that's on you. It's more to God's word. Yes, I'm a praiser. I love to praise the Lord. But I want to hear it. I want to hear what he got to say to me. And if I'm not, and I want to know that I'm in line with what he's doing, woman of God, in my life. And if I'm out of step, just a little bit, a lot of bit, get me right. Line me up. Because he's got great things. And it's not about the things that I want myself. It's about my journey with him. It's about my walk with him. It's about my knowing with him. I want to be like Noah. I want to be like Enoch. And even Levi and Moses. I want to be a Moses. I want to walk with the Lord. That's my walk. That's my desire. But he said, heaven and earth ain't going nowhere. But these things that we obtain, our clothes, our shoes, our cars, yes, he wants us to have good things. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek him. Seek him. And he give us all this other stuff. That's the first step of surrender when you start with seeking God with your whole heart. He said, seek him while he's able to be found. Seek him in the beauty of his holiness. I like to get in his presence and get in his word. God, it's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Your worsome child coming. Don't bend at me again. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. What you going to do about me, Father? What you going to do? It's me. If I'm not right, get me right. Everything that's in me, God, that's not a representation of you, get me right. Scrub it out. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Take me over. Every step and every walk that we take, every realm goes higher and higher in God. And I don't know about y'all, but I want to go higher. It's a lot going on in the world. It's a lot of division. It's a lot of strife. It's a lot of hatred. It's a like you can see wars and rumors of wars. It's actually taking place. And God said, don't take no one looking eastern. Keep your eyes on me. You keep your eyes on me, you won't stumble. You won't stray. Do, I'm there to catch you. He's there. So surrender to God. It's a defining walk for you. And in it. If you want more of him, he's got more to give you. It's a whole lot of him for all of us. Again, I say he's a great big kind of God. And he's here just for that. Amen. God bless y'all today. God bless y'all today.
we bless the Lord. Amen. We bless him. I give him glory because this word was for me too. I cannot deliver to you what God has not already given to me first. There's another level that God is trying to take. And let me tell you something. God showed me this church. I don't know if I dreamt in here. See, there are too many people who think I dreamt it or when my eyes were out open. But this church was packed. This church was full. This church. Not my church at home. Not the church down the street. This church. I've seen people all over this church. We must understand that God is not going to fill this house until we get it right. There are people standing at the door literally in the spirit trying to come in. This church got what they need. But there are some things that God's got to take you through to get you out of the way in your flesh, in your heart, in your way of thinking and how you deal with his children. He's not going to send his people in for us to hurt them and send them back out there hurt. It doesn't work like that. God ain't going to do it. He's not going to fill this house until we get it right. He's not going to do it. I am not a family member of ancestry in this church. But I'm a spirit of what God has sending and the beginning of what he's doing. You can accept it or not. But God's saying today, if we don't get it right, the wrath of God is coming. And you got to get it right. His people hurting. And there are people standing at the door in the spirit waiting to come in. I've seen it since I've been back this time. They're coming. And he's going to circumcise your heart. Mother, he's going to do it. And you know it. Don't you? He's going to do it. I promise you, God's going to do it. There's too many people They've been sitting on the sideline. There's too many people that have been hurting in here so far. There's too many people that have came and turned around. And there's too many people that are not doing nothing. So he's getting ready to establish. He's getting ready to break up the ground. Because they're coming in. Ain't they going to expose you? One thing I know about people that are in sin they don't mind calling me out. They don't mind calling a Christian out. You're supposed to be a Christian. Now, it'd be sad they come up in the house of God, in your house, in your chair, and call you out. God ain't playing. He's not playing. God is not playing in this season because he said, my people are hungry and they're not being fed. He said they're lost. And they feel like they cannot be found. And they should feel that way when the doors of the church are open. And we invite them in. And we wonder why they don't stay. It's not them, it's us. Surrender. He says, surrender today. Surrendering to God is not that hard if you love him. I'm trying to stop. Surrendering to God is really a freedom. Freely, for God I'll live, for God I'll die. If you can be kind to people on your job that don't like you. If you can be kind to people in the grocery store that don't know you. Why can't we be kind to these broken hearted people that's trying to get in the house of God? Why we can't? There's something wrong with that. And it's not them, it's us. You can't fake it, and we can't keep tripping over it. Because that dead law is going to stay right there until somebody come and move it. That's what's going to happen. So it's up to us today to decide. 
who we're going to serve. You're either choosing yourself or you're going to choose God. And self means man. Amen. I love y'all. I really do. I don't have to know you. I don't ever have to see you again. But I love you. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Our next step here in this program <laughs> is to pray for our sick, our healed, and set free. Everybody stand to their feet as we uplift the people of God and believe in God. This is not a lip service today. This is a heart thing. This is not a head thing today. This is a spirit thing. This is between you, us, and God. Amen. We uplift Sister Dorothy Davis, Sister Texana Washington, Sister Mary Davis, Sister Lola Booker, Sister Yolanda Utley, Sister Irene Baldwin, Sister Ruth Watson, Sister Dorothy Bell, Sister Sister Lucille Moore, Sister Janet Curtis, Sister Mary Hood Sanders, Sister Andrea K. Moore, Sister Catherine Stewart, Sister Tracy Taylor, Sister Sandra Gray, Sister Jean Hedgepath, Sister Maria Clark, Sister Kim Brightman, Brother Jesse Lucas, Brother Ronald Wright, Sister Phyllis McClement Clemore, Sister Dorothy McKinney, Deaconess Margaret Green, Deacon Catherine Jeffries, Brother Tommy McLean, Brother Tommy Spence, Brother Alvis Walker, Brother Tony McDowell, Brother Robert Jones, Deacon Oscar Steele, Deacon Jimmy Evans, Deacon Carl Tony Wilson, Brother William Hodge, Brother Larry Norris, Brother Justin Mark Lee Hodge, Je Brother James Turk Sr., Brother Lamont Parton, Brother Dennis Slade, Deacon, Deacon Sam Wood, Deacon Frank Reynolds, Deacon Thomas Jackson, and Sister Lillian Harold. I want to add my brother Vincent Lamar Durant and all those that we know and those that we don't know, those that we have come in contact with and those we have not come in contact with. We lift them up in the name of Jesus, and we pray for their healing. Can everybody say amen? Amen. Amen. It has been a wonderful experience for me. And I pray that it has been a wonderful experience for you. I pray that, I really do pray that if only just one, it might not been in the house, maybe online, maybe through the conference call that maybe on the drums, maybe on the keyboard, maybe on the guitar, maybe at the front of the church, the ushers, maybe someone has gotten something out of this message today. Amen. I pray those that are in the sound booth, I pray for each and every one of us that somebody got something out of this service today. I did. I cried all the way to work yesterday morning as I was praying and talking to God about this word. I was scared. Sometimes we're not receptive of words, certain words. Amen. Sometimes we reject the messenger and miss the message. That right there, right? focused on the messenger, and there's something in that message. And the main one that's rejecting the messenger is the main one that word is for. Let's keep it tight. Let's keep it right. I bless the Lord. So we're going to release church from here this morning. I love you guys. May the living word of the Lord dwell with us. May it live through us. May it fill our thoughts and deeds. May it fill our mouths with God's message of love. Amen.